What up, LK Mafia? It's your boy, RD Kicks It Just Like That. We back with another one. All right, y'all. So we got a video here, y'all. This is five most impressive heists of all time. We haven't done anything like this. This is going to be new. This is going to be interesting. This kind of reminds me of the TV show, just thinking about the title of this video, Lupin on Netflix if y'all haven't checked that out I highly recommend it it's a phenomenal show this video is not sponsored by Netflix or that TV show whatsoever I just really enjoyed that show and I can't wait for the next season but anyway we're about to get into this y'all boys and girls ready I'm ready let's go five greatest heist of all time even if we don't condone them, most people are generally fascinated with heists. Movies like Ocean's Eleven and yeah. The Sting glamorize these calculated criminal feats, yeah. and audiences around the world enjoy watching. Very true, very true. I do enjoy a nice calculated heist in a movie. In real life, I don't, I don't condone it. Fictional characters escaping with huge piles of cash and jewelry. But sometimes, these elaborate crimes occur outside of the world of fiction. Today, we're looking at the five greatest heists of all time. Antwerp Diamond Heist. The Antwerp Diamond District is one of the most heavily secured places in the world, with billions of dollars of diamonds changing hands there every year. And it was there in 2003 that one gang of thieves pulled off one of the largest diamond heists in history. Now, even though most of the gang, known as the School of Turin, has since been arrested, the mm. diamonds have never been retrieved. What? The robbery was led by Leonardo Notar Bartulo, a small-time diamond dealer, tenant of the Diamond Center, and a thief responsible for many minor jewel robberies. Although police believe he was the robbery's mastermind, okay. he claimed that he was contacted by an unidentified diamond dealer who recruited him for the crime. Notar Bartolo said he was paid to take pictures of the vault's complex security system. From those pictures, the dealer constructed a full-sized replica of the vault. Notar Bartolo states that the dealer set him up with a small gang of Italian jewel thieves, each with specific skills for the robbery. The police are not convinced. Yo, this is like a movie! Best of the truth of this anonymous diamond dealer. However, no proof has been found to support this. What? The thieves got through the 10 layers of security, previously thought to be impenetrable. They bypass cameras, the combo dial, the keyed lock, magnetic sensors, the locked steel <coughs> gate, light sensors, heat and motion sensors, and keypad disarming sensors. They used aluminum. How were they able to get past all of that? What the? F nah, they had to be some real masterminds. To trick the magnetic field and stripped plastic off the wires of the sensor circuits. Then they loaded up bags of diamonds and other jewels. It took two hours to get it all out of the sure. building. But thanks to one gang member, things eventually fell apart. That man was Pedro Tabano, known as Speedy, and one of Notar Bartolo's lifelong friends. Speedy couldn't handle the pressure. After unloading the loot into this car, he had to pull over because he was having a panic attack. Remarkably, not a single alarm went off. As security guards arrived on Monday morning, they realized that the thick steel door to the vault was open and 100 of the 189 safe deposit boxes had been raided, with some of the loot still on the floor. The world's only specialized diamond police, Patrick Pays and Agim de Breiker, phoned the vault's alarm company. What is the status of the alarm, they asked. Fully functional, came the reply. However, authorities eventually found Notar Bartolo by watching security footage. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Woo! Brazilian bank robbers. In 2017, Brazil's police arrested 16 men tunneling towards a vault containing 1 billion rias. What? It started off by saying $318,000. Now we're looking at a billion dollars? Or $318 million. Uh, oh, oh, I said... Whoa, wait a minute. I was way off with those numbers. 308. Wait, did I say 100,000 on the first one? No, that was 100 million. And this is 318 million. We're on the verge of pulling off the largest ever bank robbery in the country's history. Authorities Ooh. swooped just before the alleged gang was able to use its impressively equipped tunnel to enter the safe at a Banco do Brasil branch in the country's financial capital. That's it crazy. would have been the world's biggest heist, said police chief Fabio Pinero Lopez on Globo TV. 
Police said work on the tunnel began four months ago, starting from a house several blocks from the bank. It had sophisticated supports, fans, and lights. The police believe Alcio Cio Gomez Noriega was the ringleader of the operation. He is a 35-year-old man implicated in an attempted robbery of a security... Thought I heard something. I'm over here watching the robberies and heists and stuff, trying to make sure nobody breaking into my home. Security van in Paraguay. The court ruled the group be held in pretrial detention. Though it's hard to believe, the group dug the tunnel by hand. They loaded the soil into sacks and carried it outside through an underground stormwater drain. To enter the tunnel, gang members descended a two-meter ladder from one of the rooms in the rented house. The tunnel was about 1.5 meters high and was reinforced with iron beams and wood. And What? That's amazing! They went through all of this for a jury heist. How much did it cost them to do this? What, 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 where's this jury going? Who are they selling it to? How much money are they expected to earn from this? I have so many questions. This is amazing. Even wired with lights. The walls were lined with plastic garbage bags to reduce the dust. The tunnel was reportedly filled with food, water, special clothing, and digging tools. Police were probing whether the gang had the assistance of an engineer when building the tunnel because the construction was so impressive. The tunnel renewed memories of a tunnel robbery 12 years ago when thieves made off with about 70 million US dollars. For the previous heist, diggers worked in shifts from 8 p.m. until 4 a.m., taking a break on weekends. The three gang members... These fools had full-time jobs doing this mess, 8 p.m. to 4 p.m., taking breaks on weekends. They have food in here, lights, all kinds of stuff. This is amazing. Members involved in that attempt were involved in two separate prison escapes using tunnels equipped with ventilation and lighting. That's crazy. These dudes are pros at this stuff. They could have been easily like, yeah, hey, you remember so-and-so that broke what's the name out of prison using the underground tunnel services and stuff? Yeah, we're about to use him for this big jury heist. Like the world, the world we live in, man. This is crazy. It's like all the movies, but in real life. $500 million cyber heist. Woo! Starting in 2009, cyber criminals from Eastern Europe infiltrated at at least 100 banks in 30 countries, raking in as much as $1 billion in fraudulent transfers and hijacked ATM machines over a two year period. They did so with a mysterious Trojan called Spy Eye. The attacker struck at Russian banks first, as well as those in Germany, China, and the United States. They got away with it initially, but soon authorities tracked them down, and they were brought to justice. You know why? Because mofos kept on doing it. Like, you got a billion dollars. Stop. How much more do you need? They wasn't going to stop until they got caught. Dumb. Alexander Androvich Panin, the inventor of SpyEye, who went by alias Rybodemon and Harder Man Online, pleaded guilty to a court of conspiracy to commit bank and wire fraud in January 2014 after reaching a deal with prosecutors. Prosecutor Stephen Grimberg said SpyEye, a preeminent piece of malware developed from 2010 to 2012, was used to infect more than 50 million computers, causing nearly $1 billion in damage to individuals individuals and financial institutions around the world. A second man, Hamza Bendelaj, a 27-year-old Algerian known online as BX1, was sentenced to 15 years. Prosecutors said he sold versions of SpyEye online and used the malware to steal financial information. SpyEye was a type of Trojan virus that secretly implanted itself on victims' computers to steal sensitive information, including bank account credentials, credit cards, all that makes so much sense. All that makes so much sense. Oh my God. This is why folks be afraid of computers and online stuff because of stuff like this. Spy Eye. It, it gets on your computer and every dang on thing that you do. If you got credit cards stored on there, bank account information, all that good stuff, they, it's going to be on there. It's going to be on there easily. Crazy. 
card information, passwords, and pins. And once it took over a computer, it allowed hackers to trick victims into surrendering personal information, including data grabbing and fake bank account pages. The information was relayed to a command. That's insane. It's almost like this thing had a mind of its own. And once it got into your computer, it tricked you into doing what it is that it wanted you to do. That's crazy. And in control center to be used to access victim accounts. Panin conspired with others to advertise SpyEye in online cybercrime forums and sold versions of the software at prices ranging from $500 to $10,000. FBI Special Agent Mark Ray testified. Cannon was the architect of a pernicious malware known as SpyEye that infected computers worldwide. He commercialized the wholesale theft of financial and personal information. And That's now crazy. he's being held to account for his actions. US this fool sold the software to people publicly. They didn't even know what they were buying. Oh my God! Attorney Sally Yates stressed in a news release that many police agencies don't have the skills to effectively track down and investigate cybercrime. Tracking down cyber criminals requires a very different skill set from traditional policing, yeah. which limits the ability of law enforcement to go after cyber criminals. It also takes resources and trained personnel, which are, in many cases, in very short supply, says Martin Rosler, Director of Threat Research at Trend Micro. France's heist of the century. French gangster Jacques Cassandre was in court in 2018 for a crime committed over 40 years ago. Police noticed what? the fact the Marseillais Mafoso was the likely mastermind of the heist of the century after he was discovered to be the anonymous author of a book about the crime. On July... Wait a minute, so you trying to tell me this man this and this is more like Lupin right here this right here this is more like Lupin a book or whatever about a jury heist but this man committed a crime 40 years ago and wrote a book about it 40 years later trying to be anonymous but they found out who was the actual writer of this book of course they gonna point the finger at you the book was probably a popular book because these type of stories are good I would read books like this. It's probably a popular story, a popular book. And if you sneak and tell anybody, yeah, I was the author of that book, you know, it's a good book. Because <laughs> people tend to want credit for the work that they've done. You're like, wait a minute, how was you able to tell a story like that so vividly? Uh -huh, it was you! It was you! That's what happened. 16th, 1976, a group of criminals robbed a branch of Society General, France's third largest bank, in the southern city of Nice. Now, using the tunnels underneath the city, the gang was able to partially destroy the floor beneath the bank's basement vault and gain access to the banknotes, jewelry, gold bars, and safety deposit boxes located within. According to the Society General's own account of the incident, the brazen criminals spent the weekend taking their time going through the vault's contents, even taking the time and luxury to picnic using the depositor's silverware. He used a pen name, but investigators quickly concluded that the writer was Jacques Cassandre, a key mafia figure in Marseille, where he is now standing trial. He had assumed he was safe because the crime was too old to be prosecuted. But Cassandra is being charged with laundering the millions from the heist, a crime from which France has no statute of limitations. Police found the manuscript on Cassandra's computer, and his children later confessed that their father had often bragged about the robbery. The eventual... You see what I'm talking about? People love to talk about the things that they're proud of. He admitted to orchestrating the intrinsically planned job that involved at least six people and 30 tanks of acetylene to fuel the welding torches used to cut into safes and safety deposit boxes. An inquiry found he had also bought furs worth tens of thousands of euros and had once provided a financial guarantee with seven bars of gold. He has always said it was a novel, and I don't think a court can convict someone on the basis of a novel, a lawyer from Cassandre Frederick Monore said Monday. But Cassandre and his family members are facing a series of questions on his business dealings, with prosecutors also alleging social security fraud and a real estate scam in Corsica. 
It's not his first time in court, having been arrested in the early 1970s when police broke up the French connection heroin trade centered in Marcel. One million dollar pharmacy robber. Back in 2016, the owner of a super value pharmacy in Fort Worth, Texas, rang in the new year with a trashed business missing one million dollars worth of pharmaceuticals. The general manager, Jane Lawbaum, said the pharmacy at 720 North Industrial Boulevard was broken into in the early hours of December 31st. The burglars took highly marketable drugs with a street value of up to one million dollars, she said. Ooh. Surveillance footage shows men clad in black crawling and trying to break into a safe. Spilled pill bottles and cough syrup can be seen in the footage and what appears to be a safe with the side cut out. An employee named Richard Irby said the robber tied him and three employees up with zip ties. He said he didn't want to hurt anybody. Now we sort of took him at his word, but he's still waving a gun. The scary part, I never looked down the barrel of a gun before. The robber filled a bag with narcotics and left through the back door. Irby knows through other pharmacists the robberies are escalating. Yellow hydrocodone, what? Soma, and Xanax are the big three that most of them are after, Irby said. Now, Irby wonders how long it will be before one of those crooks decides the drugs are worth pulling the trigger. The video right. ended up becoming extremely popular with over 4 million views and Woo! This, this is crazy! This is crazy! What? Dude, I want to check out some more videos like this, man. I don't want no more heists like this to be happening around the world because people can get seriously hurt and injured and lose a lot doing stuff like this or because of people that are doing things like this. But at the same time, the stories that have happened, I want to hear about them. This is fascinating. Man, makes me want to dive into maybe reading some books or something like this. I don't know. But anyway, y'all know what time it is. Like this reaction, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. As always, the link to the is going to be down in the description box below if you haven't already. Make sure you follow your boy on the ground, man, Twitter, at our kicks. And if y'all got any movie or TV show recommendations on heist and stuff like this, comment them down below. I might want to check them out. Anyway, till the next one.